Uh, in the Hungarian system, they use language to describe moments to go. One moment to go we call accelerated attack. You begin a slow step forward. If you get close to your opponent, you can finish and hit them with an advanced lunge. So we'll do a simple exercise. Step forward if I'm close enough to hit lunge. Step forward if I step back, stop and retreat. Step forward and retreat. I wasn't there. Start to step forward and he catches me. Good. Good. The next thing we can do is we can do that with multiple steps where he's coming forward and then he suddenly, uh, when he sees the distance change, then he lunges. So we can take two or three steps. So let's take up to three steps. If you don't catch me after three, just stop. Good, caught me on the first step. Didn't catch me. Good, caught me on the first step. In the Hungarian system, you can, if you attack someone as they begin in advance, before their foot hits the ground, we call that foot tempo. That's a moment to catch them. So let's just practice that tempo so you're gonna go now. He, he did hit me before my foot hit the ground. Now, good. Let's do it on the second or third step. Now, good. Okay, now, we call that just, he's now going whenever he wants to, but if I could also give him a hand cue. And so I could say, go in foot tempo, which means at the beginning of my advance, when I open the target. So this would be hand and foot tempo. So if I keep my hand forward, he just retreats. Retreats, retreats, and runs. good. And then the final moment to go would be taking over the attack. When I stop moving, the other person can catch them. And FA a lot of times will do this trying to keep the distance close enough that I step out of distance and then just hit with a lunge. And foil and saber were more likely to step out of distance and hit with an advanced lunge. Good. Okay, in ta tactical development, once you can see the distance and you can see these opportunities, we can make traps to make the opponent think that they're available. So Reese could encourage me to make an accelerated attack by staying a little bit close when I begin a step. And then he could step back and make a pair of e So he could, so as I start a step, he stays there a little bit long, he stays there and steps back and makes a pair of e -pose. So this encourages me to finish. Uh, the next thing he could, he could encourage me to make foot tempo by creating an opening as he steps forward. So he could make me think I should go into his advance by creating a hand and foot tempo opportunity. So we can set a trap patient in a parry post. Don't take any more footwork, stop. 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 And then the other thing he could do is he could encourage me to take over the attack. So he could make a short lunge. You know, encouraging me to go, and then he could either parry that or he could step out of distance and do it back to me. So he could go short to get me to go, step back, and take over the attack back on me. So let's try that. Make a little short attack. I step out, I go. Yeah, I like. The idea of preparation is very simple. You start a certain way, which teaches your opponent something, and then you eventually change it. So let's start off like this. David's going to make the simplest possible preparation. It's very, very good for foil. He's going to take a step forward and he's going to pause. And that, if I'm smart, I'm going to learn that he's going to step forward and pause. I should be able to take over the attack. So try it the first time. Okay, and go away. I didn't get it the first time, so step forward, pause, step, pop, pop. Okay. So his movement, he steps, he pauses, he hangs out there, encourages me to go, steps back, and makes a parry pose. Now, after that happens to me a couple of times. I'm probably going to react in a different way. So this time, I'm suspicious when he pauses. So I'm going to hang out, I'm going to I'm going to wait too long, and then he's going to go again. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. so let's go back to the first two. So step and pause, I feel that, takes over the attack. And I take over the attack, he makes a parry pose. So the next time I'm suspicious when he pauses, Pause, then he can go again, because I don't do anything. Okay. Now I start realizing, now here's something else I've learned. He's taking a step, he's not really threatening, he's not attacking, so maybe I'm a little careless. The next time he takes that step forward, I might be a little close and he can just hit me with an advanced lunge. So that might happen. And then the other thing that could happen, step and stop, don't do anything else, just step and pause, pause and go away. 
And now this time, don't pause. So I think you're gonna pause after the first step just because you've done it six times in a row. Now you go step, step, go. So don't go too quickly to the next one. Just step and then just keep going. So let's go step and pause. Go away, nothing happens. And then I expect that, yes. All right, let's try a different preparation. You can teach your opponent anything. So let's try this. You take two steps forward and then suddenly pull away. So two steps, break the distance. So if I was following into that the first couple of times, after a couple of times, I realize I'm not going to be able to catch him with an attack. So I'm going to go forward very slowly. He's taught me not to bother attacking into that action. So once he's taught me that, now he can attack. So he can go forward, start to go back, do a half retreat advanced lunge. Set it up once and then do the half retreat advanced lunge the second time. Pull, yes. Very good, very good. That worked really well. All right now, here's another preparation that's really intended to get a touch as well. So we don't have to do two steps forward, half step back, six times before we get a touch. We can actually try and make a touch with the first preparation. So his preparation is going to be make a short attack. Nice and slow, really encourage me to make to take over the attack. So let's try. Okay, so that worked. Now let's do it. So if he did that to me a couple times, now I would suspect, one thing I might suspect is that when he comes forward, he's gonna make a false attack because he's done it several times in a row. Well, he can change it very simply into a real attack. So I start getting a little too close, and all of a sudden he starts nice and easy, but then he tries to hit me with the first intention. Let's start off with a false one a couple times and then a, then a deeper one, a real one. Okay, so we get a touch, then maybe the next time, do it again. And I don't follow, so I stay a little closer, and here I am, now it makes a real touch. Very, very simple. So another part of tactical development is exploiting your opponent's weaknesses. So, you know, everybody has patterns in their movement. So let's say I, you know, what I, I have a tendency to, that I, I'm a foil fencer. I'm moving along, but every time I go fast, I tend to pull my arm back a little bit. So David notices this. He noticed it when I was fencing somebody else, or he noticed it while we're fencing. So he's just going to be very patient, stay away, stay away until I go fast. And when I go fast, he's going to lunge into me. So he's going to attack in foot tempo when I pull my arm back. So first, just notice it. Let's see if you can see the pattern. So you can see that I go fast. Yeah, just stay away the first couple times. Stay away, okay? So now you see the pattern. Good. Nice and patient, waiting for that. Just You're just really fencing for this touch. You're fencing for the moment that I get too excited. Don't disengage. 